When you hear the word heavy, what do you think of? Does your mind jump to things like cars, buildings, or hippos? Things that generally weigh a lot? Or do you think of things that like guilt, shame, regret? Things that more so weigh on your heart? Or does your mind immediately jump to that one Russian guy who does this? Because yeah, me too. Personally speaking, I love the heavy. Being able to hold down M1 and look at an enemy and watch as their health drains until they topple over into a lifeless corpse, it's amazing. Heavy has multiple different weapons that allow him to do this. He can shoot the ever-loving lights out of them, beat them into submission, or even with his almighty power, shoot them with his fingers and make them go flying. We're not here to look at that and debate that here today though. Today, we're looking at what heavy would look like if we combined his weapons together. Let's get started. If you enjoy the video, leave a like and subscribe. I'll make a deal with you all. If I hit 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube, I'll make an hour-long essay video on the shortstop. We will cover absolutely everything about this weapon, so if that's something you'd want to see, hit that subscribe button. Also, I just created a Discord that you should join. It's a way for me to talk with you guys and talk through video ideas as well. With that all out of the way, let's dive into Heavy's combined weapons. Heavy has four main categories of weapons. Miniguns, shotguns, lunchbox items, and all the melee weapons. Like with the previous video, we will start with his primary weapon and work our way down the list. Starting with the miniguns, he has the Stock, Natasha, Brass Beast, Tomislav, and the Hulong Heater. There's also the Iron Curtain, which was a promotional weapon released if you beat the Heavy in a game of poker in a game called Poker Night at the Inventory. This weapon is just a reskin of Stock, so it won't add or take away anything from our calculations. Speaking of Stock, let's look at what the base stats of the Stock minigun are. The Heavy has 200 ammo load and ready to be fired on command. Each bullet does 9 base damage and can fire off every .105 seconds. Each time you fire one thing of ammo, it's actually 4 bullets you're shooting, so on one base shot, you can do 36 potential damage to a target. It takes .87 seconds to rev up the minigun. You can also hold down mouse too to have the gun revved up without firing. The minigun is one of only 3 types of weapons that are automatic primary weapons. The others are Pyro's flamethrowers and the Medic's syringe guns. It's a fairly standard weapon and one that I find tons of fun to use. Now let's jump into combining these weapons into some master minigun for Mr. Heavy to use. The miniguns bring lots of different playstyles for the Heavy. Some allow him to be more stealthy and some allow him to just be a tank and do more damage. Let's see how all their stats add up into our hypothetical combined minigun. Starting with the positives, hitting a player will slow down their movement speed, you have a 40% damage resistance while spun up and health is below 50%, and your bullets are 20% more accurate. There is no spin up sound, you create a ring of flames while spun up, and deal 25% more damage against burning players. Accuracy and resistances are always a good thing to have, and being able to surprise your enemies around a corner by having no spin up time sound can really help you rack up some kills. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's also take a look at the downsides that this open would have. First off, you would deal 15% less damage to players. You have a 60% longer spin up time, and on top of that, there is a 60% decrease in your movement speed while spun up. You have a 20% slower firing speed and you consume an additional 4 ammo every second while spun up. Looking at the stats of this new weapon, we saw that his base damage drops to 7.65, but you do 9.56 damage to players who are on fire. With this weapon, Heavy now attacks every 0.126 seconds, and it takes about 1.39 seconds for this weapon to fully wind up and be ready to attack. That might be risky though, because now, whenever you have this weapon wind up, it consumes 4 ammo to shoot out a ring of flames around your body. These downsides really hurt the minigun. Every upside this weapon has is immediately thrown out the window when these downsides are included. You are more accurate but deal less damage. Enemies cannot hear you revving up, but you have a 60% longer spin up time. It's like every upside now has an even worse downside. Let's just jump ship and take a look at his secondaries. The Heavy has two different types of secondaries, the shotguns and the lunchbox items. We'll start by looking at the former and finish with the latter. With the shotgun, you can have 6 ammo loaded and ready to fire and carry 32 in reserve. You do 6 damage per pellet, which means hitting all your shots do a total of 60 damage. You attack every 0.625 seconds, reload your first pellet every 0.87 seconds, and reload every shell after that in 0.51 seconds. These are pretty standard shotgun stats for all the classes that use them, so let's jump into what Heavy's combined shotgun would look like. 
With this combined shotgun, you have double the amount of upsides than you have downsides. Starting with the positives, this weapon has a 33% increase in clip size, a 15% increase in attack speed, and a 50% increase in bullets per shot. This weapon would have a faster weapon deploy time and fires in a fixed shot pattern. To learn more about those, I explain it in more detail in my soldier video, which you should definitely check out if you haven't already. Now to the downsides. This weapon does 35% less damage per shot, and successive shots have become less accurate. It's hard to visualize how this weapon truly changes things without seeing how these stats change the weapon overall. So let's take a look at that. This new weapon would have 9 ammo loaded instead of 6. Deal 3.9 damage instead of the usual 6, shoot 15 pellets out instead of 10, and attack every 0.53 seconds instead of the usual 0.625 seconds. You are only doing 1.5 less damage overall if you hit all your shots, as though there are no immediate stats that stick out to me as absolute garbage that make this weapon totally unusable. On to the launch box items now. Since there is no standard, we'll just jump right into the stats. One thing you will see is that I don't put names of which item gives which stat for these because they all do. So I feel like it would just be redundant and take up a lot of screen space if I left them in, so I opted to take them out. Starting us off, when you eat this item at full health, you gain 50 points of overheal. Using your primary fire or taunting with this item restores 200 health over 4 seconds, and with your secondary fire, you can throw it at another player to restore 35.25% of their max health. Also, just to let you know, these numbers were created by taking the average of all stats numbers that are in effect, so just keep that in mind. If you throw this item, you can pick it up to restore your charge, and it takes 17.85 seconds for this item to recharge after you eat it. If your health is full and you collect a health kit, this will completely recharge the food meter. This weapon also raises your maximum health by 50 points for 30 seconds. When you eat this item, you'll have some positive and negative effects added to your character. For the next 16 seconds, all damage dealt will be mini crits, and you'll be given a 30% faster movement speed. The downsides are that you can only use your melee, and damage taken is increased by 20%. Like I said, this effect only lasts for 16 seconds, so it's not the end of the world, but would still put you in a tough spot if you're trying to just get out and heal and then get back in the fight. Moving away from the secondaries for now, we have the melee weapon. Personally, I really like Heavy's melee. While classes like Scout and Pyro have a bat and axe respectively, the Heavy just uses his fists. He doesn't need a weapon, he is the weapon. Let's look at what these hands can do. Each fist thrown does 65 damage, and you can attack every 0.8 seconds. A neat thing you can do is if you left click, you'll throw a punch with your left hand, but when you right click, you'll throw a punch with your right hand. Something I thought that was interesting that the devs added into the game that just makes me love it that much more. We have a lot of melee stats to look through though, so let's just jump right into it. When you kill someone, you get 5 seconds of guaranteed crits for all your weapons. When active, it grants the wearer a 45% increase in movement speed, you gain 50 health on kill, and you take 40% less damage from ranged horses. You have a 40% faster firing speed, gain a 3 second speed boost on hit, if you crit an opponent, force them to laugh, you always crit someone if you hit them from behind, and you will force an opponent to laugh if they're wearing the same weapon as you. Lots of fun upsides to have, but looking at the downsides, I think we'll be the ones left laughing. This weapon has a 20% slower swing rate, a 150% slower switch from rate, your max health is drained while the weapon is active at a rate of 7.5 health per second capping at 100 health. You have a 30% damage vulnerability while the weapon is active, and 100% damage vulnerability from melee sources. You take 40% less overheal from medics, heal 40% less from any sort of healing, have a 30% damage debuff, and crits do no damage to opponents. To not be super down about this weapon for a minute, let's look at the extra stats this weapon has to offer. Killing an enemy with a mini crit will turn the victim into Gibbs and freeze them into solid gold statues. Maybe a proof of concept would be that their body parts explode and turn to gold during the explosion? That's just a thought, but anyways, your max health is gradually recovered while the weapon is not active, and you are given the taunt kill called Showdown. Well, that's a lot to take in for this weapon. The basic stats for this weapon don't change a lot, but it'll still be nice to look at. I won't be going super deep into all the new stats this weapon has, just because then we'll be here for a while. Looking at the basic stats for this weapon, your damage goes down to only 45.5 damage per swing, and you swing about every second. This is a serious downside for the heavy. With all these stats, I only see the stat viable in situations that you use the gloves of running urgently in. 
That discussion is for later in the video though, because now we're seeing where all these weapons rank on the tier list. As always, we're going to start with this primaries and end with this melee. Starting with the primary, we're going to drop it into the C tier. In my opinion, the long wind up time and the fire that shoots out along with the less damage outweighs having a quiet wind up sound. Grannies will see a giant circle of fire around the corner and think, hey, maybe there's a heavy around the corner. Maybe I shouldn't run into it. They won't stop to consider that they don't hear any wind up sounds at all. If you were to do that, by the time an enemy came around the corner, you would be all out of ammo because the fire drained it all. Now, the, with just the fire alone, it takes 50 seconds to drain out all your ammo. But if you're constantly firing the weapon, you're going to run out of ammo in a little under 17 seconds. For comparison, a normal minigun loses all its ammo in about 21 seconds. For these reasons, I believe it deserves to be in the C tier. It does have its uses, like just jumping around a corner to shoot an enemy or prop yourself in front of the cart and have that push you along. But these situations have their own downsides, so unless someone can think of a better reason than what I presented, it's going in the C tier. Next, the shotgun. This weapon is going in the A tier. The shotgun is a good weapon overall, and this weapon is literally a straight upgrade from the original. If you hit all your shots, which is now easier thanks to the weapon not having any bullet spread, you do literally 1.5 less damage than you would originally. You also fire faster, which can really turn the tide of a battle. The combined lunchbox items are going to go in the C tier. They heal the heavy and give him mini crits, and in turn you can only use your melee. It can help if you're in a pinch, but overall, I would suggest staying away from this weapon. If you get caught in a 1v1 and you can only use your melee, but your opponent can use any ranged weapon they please, then you might as well wave your right flag and give up. Situations like this will happen a lot, and you will die almost every single time. Finally, the melee weapon. I'm putting it in the B tier. Let me preface that this is not a weapon you should use to fight enemies. This is a weapon to help you get to the front lines and get back in the fight, or to escape from danger with your increased speed and increased vulnerability from ranged sources. These are situations you use this weapon in. If you try to melee someone, you will most likely die in at most 3 hits. Being able to increase your movement speed and get back to the fight or escape danger as the slowest class of the game is like a gift from God himself. And with that, the video is over. The series has been a blast to make and I cannot wait to make more videos. Make sure to join the Discord if you haven't already and leave a like and subscribe. We're really pushing to 10,000 subscribers so any help would be appreciated. I hope you all have a great day. Peace.